Hello and welcome uh, to World Plone Day 2024. Um, I'm going to talk to you about Plone distributions, uh, which are a great tool and I will tell you how you can use them to make your life as a developer, but also as a user of the software Plone easier. So um, what are Plone distributions? Uh, a distribution is a prepackaged version of Plone uh, that includes specific uh, features already, uh, maybe a theme, some add-ons, additional modules, uh, code that you created, include plus configuration and, and now it gets interesting, content. So keep that in mind. Uh, basically, it's a Plone site uh, with a profile package uh, that you might already know, like you have an add-on that upon installation creates some stuff and uh, registers some uh, configuration. Um, and the and the add-ons are automatically installed and the settings are applied. So but what is different um, towards the previous approach? You have just an add-on package that does that. Um, so number one, it's a well-defined way to create a distribution. So it's now there, there's, a, there's a process in place and code and how to do and register that so that you actually have a distribution. So not everyone can, has to go ahead and create content in their setup handlers, for example, in code. It's getting a bit less technically uh, technical uh, soon. Uh, also, very important, you can register a distribution on PyP. So on PyP, you can search for Plone add-ons, obviously, but you can then also search for Plone distributions. For example, a say a distribution for intranets, a, say a distribution for school websites, for university websites, for small businesses. And they come pre-packaged with a maybe a, a certain theme, some certain some content, example content, uh, maybe even users, and so on. So um, that is that is uh, extraordinary. And, and the, the the biggest difference there is this, uh, a well-defined way to create demo content in these sites uh, that was not not there before. So how do they work? Um, they basically uh, replace the create site uh, uh, page that you have, and from there um, you get they they take some information that you can give them, and it it basically works. I will show you how that happens. So this is the uh, Plone demo classic site, the one I had just running in my browser. I see here this is the classic demo Plone org. And it, this is the repository for that. So it has a an add-on package that's called Plone Demo Site, and inside that that is used to be the same for a couple of years now, and it has uh, seen a couple of changes in the last couple of months at the Sprint uh, in in Gießen, for example, and it now has a new module called Distributions inside it, and this distribution is registered in Configure ZML. Here as Plone distribution with the beautiful name Classic Demo and has a post handler, even a, a custom co post handler for the distribution. So once that happens, uh, additional things happen. Obviously, also I uh, forgot that you have to specify Plone, Plone distribution as a dependency for that add-on package and then you can uh, register that as a plone distribution like here like this is done in the classifiers here so you can find this then on pypi so once this is done and i start uh, this instance uh, so this is the um, this folder uh, demo plone org slash classic which holds the classic demo i'm starting with the classic because a bit more simple uh, to start get started so i'm starting this site I'm starting the um, this page. Uh, so Plone is now running locally on my uh, laptop, and it is here. It al already has a site, but I don't want that right now. So I'm going to delete this uh, site uh, to start fresh. So no site. This is obviously you don't have to do that. So when you go to localhost 8080, you now see a view which is 
maybe unfamiliar for you uh, already before, has been unfamiliar before, because now uh, you have available distributions, default, classic. So this is a simple Voto site. This is a simple classic site like you used to have when you create a new site without any add-ons installed. And here you have classic demo or also available. Um, once I, I click on this button, I get a view, um, a form that uh, where I can specify the title and all the other, other things for this site. And I have this button, create example content. And if you're wondering, this is actually a React application and it uses uh, the, the questions that are provided by the distribution show you here in the schema. These are the questions that define uh, what is uh, asked, what you what questions you can ask the user when you create uh, when they create a distribution. I'm not going to go into much detail now. Just click submit. And after a second, it is done. Oh, fun. I had Basque uh, created as as default language before, just switching back to English. So now I have my demo site. And what's uh, obvious is there is demo content inside of it. Same as the, the official classic demo plone org. This is the exact same, not the same website, but the same repository. I just created a local inst instance of that. And I have some content um, here. I just, uh, yeah, there's a video, a nice penguin, love them penguins. And uh, the front page, I have users, uh, so I can uh, log in as these users. If I log out as an admin, I still uh, got these, uh, like the demo site has these uh, predefined users as a manager and editor in chief and stuff like that. So all of this has come from the distribution. But how? In the past, this was done, we had demo sites in the past, obviously. In the past, we used some fancy magic that imported a ZX, the ZOP export file, um, serialized pickles, basically, uh, into a running site, uh, which allowed to import that, modify it, export it again, which was pretty, pretty tedious and a very technical task. And now it's less technical, obvious. So, but this is all gone. So the setup handler, you see, this is proof, is empty. There's nothing happening. The only thing, everything is happening in the distribution itself. And it has, uh, in the profile as JSON, it has the dependencies that are needed for, um, for the distribution. Obviously, um, it's a multilingual site. It has easy form installed, the default theme, and some co the content types, the normal ones. And here's this uh, module, the folder called content. And inside that folder, we have some JSON files um, with information. And if you've ever seen a talk by me about export import and migrating Plone, uh, this is exactly the same format that you had there. Uh, for for the uh, the additional exports and in items you have the individual content items that should be create imported upon creation of the site so the what plone uh, distribution uses is actually collective export import to import the content that is stored in this folder contents uh, content of your distribution. Uh, but that's not all. Um, but also, let me switch to the Volto demo before I uh, go any further. Uh, so you see that it also works for that. So uh, the Volto demo is in the same repository. Uh, there is a backend folder. Um, I can start that. Obviously, I also need to start the front end. Let me prepare that um, demo uh, front end, make start. So now the, the back end of the uh, demo instance should already be running. It also has a site. I'm going to delete that as well. It's not the same. So if you click on that, you don't see any of the demo content. It looks much different, but I'm going to delete that anyway. Um, obviously, I logged out before, so delete that. OK, 
kill it. Okay, and now I started a different backend, a different instance. Uh, let me show you what changed. I'm gonna go to my editor, close that, and maybe, yeah, I should obviously uh, open that. So this is the full repository. Here we used to, we have been in the classic one. Now we are in backend, which is the basically the plone backend for the uh, for the Volto demo. It also has an add-on called plone six demo. So no no namespace here. Uh, it ha also has a folder uh, module called distributions. It's called Volto demo, and it's also registered in configure zzml exactly the same way. It has some more logic to it, but it's actually very not very fancy. It doesn't have a lot of additional logic in, in the add-on. It's basically only the distribution. Um, so this is the distribution that is available to this uh, running site. And I'm going to, uh, obviously, I'll have to start that again, the back end. My front end is still running here on top. I can obviously check my front end. It should throw an error message because I don't have here, there's nothing because I don't have a, a, a site created yet. So, okay, uh, go to the, uh, I'll go to the localhost 8080 and I create the Volto demo site and I click on submit. And while I do that, I switch to the terminal and you already see a lot of output where it says, okay, created items, such and such, uh, which lives here and here, and then also uh, skipping import of translations because there's no file translations, JSON. So the Volto demo is English only so far. And there's no default pages, obviously, because Volto has no default pages. There's no members and so on. So a bit simpler, but not regarding the content. So my, my backend is running, the front end is still running, and I can see the backend here and I can access the front end on localhost 3000, obviously. And here it is. And you may have seen that before because this is the new and improved demo uh, site for uh, Plone. So if you go to uh, demoplone.org and you go to the main, not the classic demo, this is what you see. Got some penguins here, some examples for content types with images. It uses the Volto Lite theme. It has uh, a couple of add-ons installed, which are listed here, uh, that work nicely with the Volto Lite theme. And it has the Volto form block, so you can create forms, uh, same as the classic demo has Easy Form, for example. So yeah, this is the demo side, and this is my local version of that. So uh, I prove that it works creating these sites. So now it gets interesting, because now I log in as an editor and I modify the, the site, and I'm gonna just change this uh, block here. Simple change on the front page, and switch uh, this block around, move it to the right here, and maybe also change some text. What should I change? Uh, more demo sites, just simple. Oh. I don't know, I have no idea. Hacking is, let's say, make keep it simple. So uh, locally, obviously, obviously these changes are here. And if I stop the site and start the site again, it's it will obviously still be there. But when I uh, delete my backend um, manage, which I'm not going to do now, uh, all the data will be lost. So before deleting that, I will go to the export form. So there is not, not only the, the, there's the import form, but it's kind of hidden away in the site create thing. So this export all is a form in the back end that's available where you can export everything that you want uh, from the existing site using collective export import in a slightly as uh, modified form. So let me first check what I actually want. I only want ordering and redirects. So 
I don't want any discussion, any relations, any translations. Actually, I also don't want any redirects. I don't know why I have them here. Uh, let's just leave them out and just use the content and the ordering. And I click on export all and it's already done. Like here, it just happened uh, while I did that. And now I can delete my site. Let's do that. And create it fresh. So the database is gone and now it was created uh, anew and I'm going to reload the site now. We're going to go to the second uh, image in the slider and it should be on the right side. And this should be uppercase, it is. So how did this happen? Um, this happened like this. So in the repository, uh, this is the uh, this is a Git, Git uh, viewer where I can see the, the change uh, log, change set. And obviously now we have some uh, additional uh, or changed data. For example, here, happy hacking is now a capital H and some additional data here, the flag align of the whatever that uh, the, the um, I think it's called I don't know how that block is called, but it's a it's a cool block. Um, it should it should say here how it's called. Um, the line can check that it's not the separator. It's the slider block, obviously. Yeah, the slider block uh, has now a flag a line of right. So here I see this blue line tells me there's a change, and I can do these, and I now can commit these changes to the repository, push them. And in, let's just do this, uh, only this site, maybe uh, only this one file, happy hacking. And yeah, let me only, yeah, let's just push this. Uh, move one slider to the right, bam. And I push that, I, push that to the main repository. So tomorrow morning, uh, when World Pawn Day actually starts, because I'm recording on Tuesday, uh, the second slider should be on the right, unless I broke something, which could happen, but in a very, very unlikely in this case. Um, so um, I, the, the, the point to take away here is that it, this makes it very easy for you from the Plone community to enhance the demo sites. Just go to the repository, check it out. It's all in the in the uh, in the in the in the README. Also, build it locally with make install and make start. Change the content to your liking and make a pull request with these changes, and the content will be there in the in the in, in the repository. And in the once uh, the site is rebuilt again, it will be there. Um, but also, uh, I stopped the site, so I'm getting an error message now. So let's take this one step further. Uh, you can not only um, you can not only use that for demo sites. Uh, the plone distributions are meant for more complex setups as well. So we're planning to create a, there's a, a base repository already with some, some, some work was already done there called plone.edu, which should be a, a distribution for universities and institutes of, for education and research. And you can imagine many more um, distributions like that to show up. And then you can, as a user or a developer, you can just download these repositories, follow the instructions, which should basically be a make install, make start. Uh, and you have either a Docker image running, a container running, or have a, lo a local installation of uh, this demo. Uh, distribution and you can test drive plone in various um, flavors uh, for example for uh, university universities or small businesses or I there's like there's no limits to the application of uh, of distributions 
So with that in mind, you can also, this, this, is, this is awesome already. So this is great. You can test drive Plone for various use cases. Um, but since the whole thing is built on export import, um, you may remember if you've dealt, worked with that before, export import is built to be extended. So you can extend export import with uh, additional hooks. So you can customize the export and the import. So you can use this feature to do a bit more complex things than just example content. Um, and I have one, uh, one project uh, which I want to uh, show here. Let me s stop these, uh, the front end and the back end, and I will switch to this project. It is a uh, internal application. It's on GitHub uh, by uh, the Bundesamt für Strahlenschutz. And it is called Dogpool, and it's not a use case you will have unless you own a couple of nuclear power plants, which I guess you don't, or I hope you don't. Um, and it has, uh, let me look at the code first. So we create, in for this project, we create ad, uh, demo content of, uh, with the complex problems like fields that really, uh, that depend on content that has to be has to exist before this is a typical problem for export import where you have a value that is then validated against a vocabulary but the vocabulary is not filled with uh, content yet because the content is only imported after the original item is imported so it's a chicken and egg problem or yeah and uh, so there's there are a couple of workarounds. They're all documented in export in collective export import. And for uh, the distribution that we use here in uh, this project, so we have a distribution called Dogpool Demo. This is not on GitHub yet because it's not yet merged. This is very much work in progress, but it'll get there. There are, uh, for example, some export handlers in a customized version of the export. So, for example, um, if you've worked with export import before, this should be very basic export annotations. So a couple of annotations. Uh, that are used on the content in this application, which is not a website, basically. It's an application, for example, faceted criteria. You remember that maybe from uh, EEA faceted nav navigation or journal entries, which is an annotation to store journal entries, obviously, uh, are also exported using uh, um, the REST API uh, to JSON uh, to tr turn that data into JSON. So that this data once it exists in the application, can be exported as JSON into a distribution and be used as demo content. Same with marker interfaces. There are a couple of marker interfaces. Um, for example, Dogpool undeletable, which prevents stuff from being accidentally deleted even by admins and other things. Uh, so nothing too fancy in the export. Um, and for the import, there are a bit more complex things because this site deals with uh, instance behaviors. There is a custom implementation of instance behaviors called local behaviors. And here we set these behaviors on the objects before deserializing, which uh, has just I don't, I'm not going to go into much detail here. It's a complex uh, problem, which is also documented in various places. And one of the uh, things that have to happen is you have to invalidate uh, the dexterity assignable cache in this, uh, for, for this to actually work. And yeah, so this is a bit more complex um, to handle data that is dependent on other data be, that has to be there. And um, yeah, it's not, not not your typical default content. So I'm going to go to the backend folder, make start, um, same as the demo sites. And when I go to my uh, local instance of that, 
I have a the option to in, import um, demo content, make a dot pool demo. That's how it's called. I'm gonna just add that. I'm gonna call that clone one. There is no custom form here. Uh, one of the really cool features that is very easy to extend this form. Say, okay, uh, custom color, uh, custom. I don't know. Uh, how many uh, how many subdivisions of what 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 do you want to uh, do you want to create and uh, this needs to uh, th this data can then be used in python when creating the site so when i click submit here uh, it runs there's quite a lot of demo content here and it'll it takes a while but uh, imagine having to do that in python in a setup handler that has to go ahead and create each item by itself, A, it's much slower uh, when the site is running and using export import is much, much faster. So it's done, has just created, uh, imagine, uh, it, remember we had to invalidate the caches uh, many times, 500 items, so not a huge number, but enough. And here is my, uh, my, my demo data and I can say, okay, here's stuff, stuff that's happening uh, in, in this demo, uh, in this instance. I'm not going to go into details of the application. So this is cool. Um, what's also cool is that, uh, let me start that again. Obviously, with the there's a cookie cutter for that, and the cookie cutter, but not only the cookie cutter, also the uh, the the repository um, for the um, for the demo sites of Plone have a couple of has a have a script called create site that creates the site uh, using a make file command. So what you can do is once I deleted that make create site uh, and it does exactly the same it just creates the site with the demo content uh, this is actually the command that is running um, when we deploy the demo sites in docker so for this project we did the same uh, we have a, a docker setup um, that builds the demos demo site uh, the image without demo content in, oh God, I obviously did not delete everything. So there, yeah, it, it believe me, it works. Uh, I can do the same with the, um, I'll just do the same with the demo uh, site quickly um, in the backend for the Volto version. If you pass delete existing equals one, it'll delete any existing site that, uh, existed before that and it then creates the site and it, it's blazing fast. Obviously the Volto demo didn't create 500 items but it, uh, but it created some. Um, what was I trying to say? I was, yeah, so we uh, built the, the Docker image um, in CI and upon deployment of a demo site internally we run the create site script and we have the demo content there instantly and the the users of the application the client in this case can go ahead and uh, test this uh, the demo content change the demo content uh, themselves oh i yeah i already had it running sorry try to start the same thing twice uh, can go ahead, change, modify the demo content, create new users, create local roles, create whatnot, everything that is possible with uh, export import and have uh, the, the content modified, same as I just did with the Volto demo site. Um, so what's in store for the future of that? Um, there is a, a new package called Plone Export Import that will be uh, the default dependency for Plone distribution, which uh, will support only Plone 6 and Python 3, obviously. So then the point is that this will allow us to have Plone distribution and Plone Export Import as a core dependency of Plone itself, because 
collective export import also supports archetypes in Python 2 and whatnot. And we don't want that in the core of uh, Plon 6. So uh, Erico started uh, Plon export import, which is a slimmed down version of collective export import. Um, so what can you do now? You can um, look at the package and the documentation. You can create your own distributions in no time. It's one set CML statement. You create a site, you export that, put the content in there and you have your distribution. Um, bit easier maybe is you build the demo sites locally and turn the demo plone org into a multi multilingual site or change some wording or some images that you may like or not like to something else. Uh, you can use your uh, the uh, plone distribution for your client projects to create demo content that the client can then modify and say, okay, we have a new feature. Uh, the feature is, for example, a faculty uh, member, uh, and we create uh, new we create demo content for that. And you can it's not not being lazy, but you can outsource this functionality, this feature, to the client who says this is actually what we need. Otherwise, it has to round trip uh, to you back to you, and you'll have to do that work, which is basically their job to create content uh, using the features that you develop for them, and so with this feature, they can actually see that it works and it's not. Uh, faked by uh, in Python by creating the content, but it's actual content that is exported and re-imported and it should work all the time. So um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, this is was Plon Distribution uh, with a focus on the demo content feature of that. There are a couple more. Um, I'm hoping to see some examples of distributions which uh, maybe allow you to choose various flavors of one distribution uh, using the form on when you create a site or have a distribution that has a package that has multiple distributions in it uh, to select from them, for example, I don't know, public, intranet, uh, extranet, or what whatnot. There are limitless possibilities here. Uh, thanks for tuning in and enjoy the rest of the World Plum Day and bye-bye.